Hey, Evan Reese here. Regeneration Timer is a custom feature that I made for Onshape that lets us evaluate the time it takes for a certain subset of features collectively to regenerate. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, you, you have this show regeneration times fly out menu. Um, and this shows us how long each feature in our tree takes to compute. This is an essential tool for any serious user so that they can optimize their model. When you're presented with any kind of CAD goal, there's always, uh, you know, a thousand ways to skin a CAD. You can get the same result um, in the end, but sometimes your regeneration time will be absolutely um, abysmal and sometimes it'll be fast. So this one's coming in uh, right around 11 seconds and has about 200 features, as I can see here. And uh, the worst of which is coming in at about two seconds. This is my custom drape surface feature. I already know that's a heavy feature, so I'm not surprised, um, but it's the only way to get some of the intermediate steps that I used to get this texture. Um, this is a model that I have been working on. I will do a demo of it later, but for now, I'm going to use it to show you the regen timer feature. So the reason I made this feature in the first place is these, uh, in this menu, it automatically sorts from the worst offender down to the least at the bottom. But, um, you can see that the top five features are, you know, they're pretty big. They make up a decent amount of it, but, um, really what you can't always get a good sense of is what's happening in here. And a lot of times, especially with, you know, the more features you have, 200 features or so, um, these are what can really get you. It can be kind of a death by a thousand paper cuts situation, and you won't really know that it's, you know, those 30 fillet features are collectively costing you more than, than these features up here. So um, with the current way that Onshape is set up, there's not a great way to evaluate that. And that's what my regen timer feature does. Um, I'm going to go through how to do that. But before I do, I just wanted to say that um, I love helping teams improve their efficiency in Onshape. That's why I created the Onsherpa. That's my consulting business. Um, and I am here to help teams at the intersection of people, process, and tools, and whatever that looks like. So it could be feature script automation, but it might just as well be, um, you know, an agenda and regular cadence for a certain meeting you need to run to make sure your team is working well together. Or maybe it's helping, um, you know, you're switching from SolidWorks or something like that, and you need to not just migrate your data, you need to migrate people's hearts and minds to uh, the Onshape way of working. So if you're interested in any of that, if you feel that, um, you know, there's efficiency yet to be gained in your business, I hope you'll reach out. Um, but here's an example of an efficiency that I have enjoyed um, creating for Onshape. So right now I have this thumb button folder. That's all the features I used to create this little thumb button on the side. Um, and because this is an organized model, I know that um, all the features that make this are in here. So if I wanted to know how long are these 35 features take, there's not a great way to, to figure that out from here. Um, I suppose you can sort this way and it goes somewhat in order. You can sort by the number, um, and then you can manually add them up when you find the first one. You know, I can click, uh, it's hard, okay? So what I've done instead is created this timer feature, and I've got a start timer, and I have an end timer down here. And then if I go to the feature script notices pane, I can see that that folder took me uh, about 1300 milliseconds, about 1.3 seconds. Um, and that's really helpful information to know because, you know, the, the heaviest feature I have here is about two seconds followed by one that's less than that folder. So if there was a different way to accomplish what I did in there, then that, that's a pretty meaningful, um, performance improvement. So let me show you how the feature works. Um, I'll show a, a basic example. Let's, let's measure this folder instead, um, button details. So I'm going to open regen timer and I'm going to type a name for it. This is a string field. It can be literally anything. You can type it in, you know, camel case or with underscores, just like variables for consistency if you want, but it, it can be anything. The only important thing is that it matches whatever the stop timer says. Um, and that's not too hard to do because it will remember what you typed last and put it back in here. So if I just hit shift enter to recall that same feature and switch this to stop mode, now I've got a start and a stop of the same timer in my feature tree. And all that's left to do is drag it where I need it. So one above and one below. And let's take a look. All right, button details. Here we go. We've got a time for, you know, everything between this and that. Um, now, 
let's talk about some of the quirks of this feature. I am operating somewhat at the fringes of what's possible in FeatureScript. Um, FeatureScript is really, really placing a high priority on deterministic regeneration, meaning that when you open your model, it rebuilds the exact same way that it did the last time because CAD is your single source of truth. So um, they don't have like random functions. You don't have a way to input the date and time into a feature. You can't uh, use data from the weather in Kansas, you know, outside of API calls or anything like that. Um, and I cannot access the, the, the start and end time data in there, except through the timer function, which can only print down here. So I can't like make this into a variable or print, you know, show it in a banner up here or rename the feature with how long it took. So that's why it's here. I would uh, love to have it somewhere else, but it's better than nothing. And the other quirk here is that the start time only gets recorded when the start feature regenerates and the end time uh, just measures the difference, which means that if I were to change something below the start time, um, let's say I did something inconsequential, like I added this point here um, in this sketch, it's not going to do anything to my model. I know that, but um, you know, the CAD just for good measure, it knows like oh, something's different. Let's regenerate everything and make sure um, that it's good. So I changed that. And if you recall what the original, um, was, I think it was in the eight thousands and let's see what it, what it gives us now. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot higher because the start time here hasn't actually changed, but the end time is right now. So the way to get around that is to edit this start feature and click the button called final. It's important that you do that. And then uh, what, what this button does, if you're not aware, is it regenerates everything after the feature that you're editing down to the rollback bar. So these are no, not grayed out anymore. I'm regenerating the whole feature, even things that are after this. And then after that, I need to click the reset start time button. And that forces this start timer to regenerate, which will give it the current time instead of whatever time it recorded previously. So with those two things done, we will get an accurate read. And in fact, the original 8,000 something, something was wrong as well. So I do want to make you aware of that quirk. I, I know it's, it's not ideal for me, but it is the only way that I'm aware of to get this level of granular detail when you're evaluating your models. Um, so I hope you find that really useful. If you did like subscribe do all the YouTube stuff and go ahead and check me out. My URL is in the description as well. Thanks for watching.